In order for us to calculate the acceleration of body A, we're going to have to draw a free body diagram of both of these bodies. We will begin with body A. And so we have tilted the X and Y axis for convenience's sake. As you will see, we're going to draw forces that are acting on body A. Now, the most obvious force is the gravitational force. That's going to be pointing straight down, and we're just going to label that W to represent the weight. You can also represent it as mg, but we choose W for now. We have the surface of the ramp pushing up on body A, and it's acting perpendicular to the ramp surface. So that is indeed the normal force. And then we also have the friction between the surface of the ramp and body A. For now, we're going to assume the friction is pointing up the ramp in the positive x direction. We will label that F. If our assumption is wrong, then when we calculate F, we'll get a negative for that F force. So we'll have to just turn it around and point it the other way. But for now, we'll assume that it's up the ramp and therefore positive. And then we also have the tension force because body A was connected to body B through a rope or a string. And so the tension force is going to be pulling body A up the ramp as well, and we will label that T. The next thing you want to do is arrange these forces into a force table. A force table will arrange the forces on the left column, and then we're going to have a couple of other columns for the X and Y components of each force. For the X component, you're going to be multiplying by the cosine of an angle, but please be careful. When you measure your angle, you want to make sure you're measuring it from the positive X axis. So for instance, if we look at the weight force or the gravitational force, we want to make sure that we are measuring the angle to that force from the positive X axis. So we're actually going to need that angle right there in order to find the X and Y components. Now we have a yellow right triangle highlighted there. This angle is 90 degrees. We know the sum of the angles in a triangle is 180. So of course this angle right here has to be 50 degrees because then 50 plus 40 plus 90 gives us that 180. Now ask yourself, what is the angle from the positive X axis all the way over to that W force? Well, we know that the angle from the positive to the negative X axis is 180, but you'd have to add 50 more to get to the weight force. So 180 plus 50 is 230 degrees. So you're basically taking the weight and you're multiplying it by the cosine of 230 to get the X component and then multiplying the weight by the sine of 230 to get the Y component. We'll next look at the normal force. And again, ask yourself, what's the angle between the positive X axis and the normal force? And you should conclude easily in that case that that angle is just 90 degrees. So for that normal force, we'll have Fn times cosine 90 and then Fn times the sine of 90. Note that the cosine of 90 is actually 0 degrees, so this will actually go to 0 here. We can simplify. And then the sine of 90 is 1, so Fn times 1 is actually just Fn. So we can knock out this sine of 90 right here. So sometimes you can simplify your forces in that manner. We next look at the frictional force. Ask yourself again, what's the angle between the positive x-axis and the frictional force? Because the frictional force is sitting right on the x-axis, that angle will be 0 degrees. So you're going to have the frictional force times the cosine of 0 degrees, frictional force times the sine of 0 degrees to get those components. The sine of 0 is 0, so f times 0 goes away, and then cosine of 0 is 1, so f times 1 is just f. The same thing will hold for the tension force. It's got the same angle of 0 degrees, so we're just going to end up with tension times 1 and then tension times 0. So there is our force table, and then now we want to turn over to Newton's second law and take the sum of the forces in the x direction. And so if we look in the x direction, we're going to have the weight of body A. Now, the weight of body A was given by the question. That was 102 newtons, so we're going to plug that in for W. Okay, so we're looking at the x forces. We have 102 newtons times cosine of 230 degrees, and then we have plus F and then plus T. And this is going to equal the mass of body A times its acceleration. But in part A of the question, the acceleration was zero because the body was not moving. And so that will simplify the right-hand side completely to zero. Let's pick up our calculator and do 102 times the cosine of 230, and you're going to get negative 65.56. And for now, we'll just circle that equation because we have two unknowns. Let's turn to the sum of the forces in the y direction. So you're going to be looking at this section of the table. We're going to take the weight of 102 newtons, multiply that by the sine of 230. And then we have plus Fn. And then, well, that was it, actually, because everything else kind of zeroed out. So this is good. Let's pick up our calculator and do 102 
times the sine of 230, and we will get negative 78. And then we add that 78.14 to both sides, and we will see that the normal force on block A is that 78.14 newtons. So that's going to come in handy in a moment, but for now, we have to turn over to block B and draw the free body diagram for that block. Now this free body diagram is going to be easier because we have the weight of block B pulling it downward, and then what's holding it upward is the tension force. And so now we can use just one direction here. We can say the sum of the forces in the y direction. Let's call this the positive and this direction the negative. We'll have T minus the weight of block B, and then that's going to equal the mass of block B times acceleration. But block B also is not moving. Remember, it's connected to block A, so if block A isn't moving, neither is block B. So the acceleration there is zero. Also, we were given the weight of block B. If we go back up and check that out, that was 32 newtons. So we can plug that in down here and easily solve for the tension. When you add 32 newtons to both sides, you will see that the tension is indeed 32 newtons. Now this is all very good because we're going to go back to that first equation that we had circled, this one right here. We now have the tension, we, all have the, we now have the normal force acting on block A. So let's fill in some information here. We have negative 65.56 plus the frictional force. Now don't forget, the frictional force is going to be the coefficient of static friction multiplied by the normal force. And then we have plus the tension is equal to zero. Now, the coefficient of static friction was given to us in the problem. It was equal to 0.56. So we're going to be able to plug that in if we would like to. But now, indeed, I'm noticing something here. We might actually want to leave this frictional force as just F and actually calculate its value. So let's pause and back up here. Let's actually take the tension that we found from earlier. Remember, that was from when we did the free body diagram of block B, and that was 32 newtons. So we're going to actually fill this in make a little more room here. We can easily solve for F because we have that negative 65 plus the 32 and that's going to give us negative 33.56 and then we just add that to both sides and we can see that the friction is 33.56 newtons. Now you might be wondering well why are we calculating that friction in that manner? Well the reason is we want to compare that to the maximum static frictional force. You might remember from your studies of this chapter that the maximum static frictional force is going to equal that coefficient of static friction multiplied by the normal force. Well now if we take that coefficient of static friction of 0.56 and then multiply that by the normal force, we're going to see something interesting here. We will see that the maximum static frictional force is about 43.8 newtons. That's the maximum static frictional force. But we calculated a frictional force of only 33.56 newtons. So what's happening is that our frictional force is less than the maximum frictional, static frictional force. What this means is that block A, it started at rest, it's going to remain at rest because the frictional force that's acting on it is smaller than the maximum. And therefore, the acceleration of block A in part A of the question will remain 0 meters per second squared. So that is the correct answer to part A. Let's go over to part B and see what it was asking. It now tells us that block A was moving up the incline. Now that's going to make a significant change to our original free body diagram of block A. We can imagine block A is now moving up the incline, so it's kind of moving in the positive x direction. That means there's no longer static friction acting on it, but rather kinetic friction, because block A is now sliding up against the ramp. Furthermore, we now know that since it's sliding up the ramp, the friction wants to oppose that. So we're going to take the friction and we're going to kind of flip it around and point it in this direction. We're going to call this kinetic friction to be very specific. Now again, we want to ask ourselves, what's the angle between the x-axis and that kinetic friction? And you should notice that that angle now is 180 degrees. So we want to go back to where we had the frictional force in our force table, which we've kind of copied and pasted here. We're going to have F sub K, and then now it's going to be times the cosine of 180, and then F sub K times the sine of 180. Now, of course, the sine of 180 is still 0, so this still zeroes out, but now the cosine of 180 is negative 1. So over in here, FK times negative 1 is going to be negative FK. So you just want to make sure we make that change right there. And then as before, we're going to add the forces in the X and Y direction. 
Now, notice this time in the x direction, we have left the acceleration as an unknown. We're going to call it a. We don't know right now if the acceleration is zero in the x direction. We knew it in part a, but we don't know right now. On the other hand, in the y direction, the acceleration of body a is zero, because if you consider the body a, it's not accelerating in this direction. There's no way that this thing is sort of lifting off the surface of the ramp or furthermore, digging itself into the surface of the ramp either. So there's no acceleration in the y direction, which means that when we solve for the normal force, it'll be the same as what we had earlier. It was that 78.14 newtons. Now let's take the kinetic frictional force and expand that. That has to be written in this case as mu k times the normal force. And so we're gonna swing down here and we're gonna plug that normal force in that 78.14 right here as well as mu k, that was given in the problem as well. Now we continue on, we could pick up our calculator and punch this all in at one time and you would get negative 85.1 newtons plus the tension equals, now as for the mass, let's not forget that weight is equal to mass times g. The question gave us the weight of 102 and then g, of course, is 9.8 meters per second squared. So if you divide both sides of that by 9.8, you would see that the mass of body A is about 10.4 kilograms. Then that's times the acceleration. Now, there's still two unknowns here, so we're in a bit of a jam. Let's consider body B. We know that the free body diagram of body B has the weight of body B going down and then the tension going up. We're going to call the downward direction positive and the upward direction negative, and then we can do Newton's second law. The sum of the forces in the y direction would equal the mass of body B multiplied by the acceleration. Notice that the acceleration of body B is going to be the same as the acceleration of body A because they are connected together by that single rope. So now we have the weight force in the positive direction minus tension is equal to, uh-oh, we need the mass of body B. Remember. Same idea as before. We know the weight of body B was 32 and G is 9.8. So divide both sides by 9.8 and you'll see the mass is about 3.27 kilograms. And then that again is times acceleration. In fact, for WB, we can plug in that 32. Okay, so we need to solve for the acceleration. Perhaps we could add T to both sides and then subtract the 3.27A. And this is convenient because now that we have this expression for tension, we're going to go back and plug that into our equation we developed earlier for body A. Now we'll collect some like terms. We can add those together. Add 3.27a to both sides. And then divide both sides by the 13.67. We will get about negative 3.88 this is meters per second squared. This is the acceleration of body A. Now, if they want it in unit vector notation, you could say that the acceleration, and now let's think about this, it's negative. The way that we had it arranged is that the x-axis was parallel to the ramp. This was the positive x-axis. This was the negative x-axis. The x-axis is represented by the i-hat notation. So you'd have i-hat here. And then again, it was negative 3.88 meters per second squared. So this is the unit vector notation. That is the correct answer. Notice that in part B, the body A was traveling up the ramp. So the velocity was going this way, but we just determined that the acceleration was actually down the ramp. So this means that body A was actually slowing down while it was on its way up the ramp. We now look at the final part of this question, which was part C, and that says that body A was initially moving down the incline. So here's our drawing from part B. Think about this now. Body A is going down, so the velocity is in this direction. And ask yourself, well, what would that mean about the kinetic frictional force? Well, kinetic friction opposes that motion, so we have to take the kinetic frictional force and point it back up the ramp this time. So that means that the angle for the kinetic frictional force is going to be zero. So when we go back into our force table, we would have the kinetic frictional force times the cosine of zero, which is just one, and then the kinetic frictional force times the sine of zero, which is zero, so that would knock that out. So that's an important difference. Now let's set up our Newton's second law in the x and y directions again. So that's very similar to part B. Notice that we changed the minus fk to plus fk, again, because we changed the direction of fk. The acceleration in the x direction 
is what we're looking for. And then in the y direction, it's still zero. So you're still gonna end up with that 78.14 Newtons. Once again, let's take FK and expand it into mu K times that normal force. We'll swing down here and start plugging some things in. And so we would then combine all of these like terms to get negative 46 roughly plus tension. We have that same scenario where we have two unknowns, both tension and A, so you know what's coming. We're gonna look at body B again. We apply Newton's second law, so we have WB minus tension equals the mass of body B times that same acceleration as body A contains. This is 32 as given. The mass we obtained earlier was 3.27. And we rearrange the equation, solve for T, and you should get tension is equal to 32 minus 3.27 A. Once again, you're gonna plug that in right there. And then solving is the same ball game as earlier. Just take that negative 46 and add it to 32 and you should get negative 14.0. And then add that 3.27 to the other side. And then divide both sides by 13.67. This time the acceleration is about negative 1.0 meters per second squared for body A. That's the correct answer. Again, in unit vector notation, you could say that that is equal to negative 1.0 meters per second squared. It's in the negative x direction. So x direction is the i hat notation. There it is right there. Notice this time, since body A's velocity was down the ramp and the acceleration is also down the ramp, Body A is now speeding up, as is body B. Thanks for taking the time to watch this quite long video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I would greatly appreciate it. But of course, please do not feel obligated to do so.